Now we're live every place. All right. What a great, what a great place to stop to join me at uh, 360's performance talk at KUHSDenver.com when you listen to Tito Puente. Oh yeah, como ya? Ah, see, okay, that's about as far as I'm gonna go with my Spanish today. <laughs> but I'm here with one of my my friends and uh, just a champion all around, and he's gonna be a champion again uh, in anything he does. But hopefully, one key thing's coming up for Josh Cuddly Bear Copeland is on New Year's Eve. Uh, this year out in New York City. Uh, we're going to be talking about that uh, event. We're going to talk about the PFL. We're going to talk about mindset and mental toughness and resiliency and all those great things that make up uh, the world of a true champion. Because, you know, there are champions and there's true champions. And we're going to distinguish that as well. But before I get into that and we start talking to Josh, my, my bud here, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, what's going on in other parts of the world. I'm going to I'm going to show you that, people. Look at that purple. Get it. Kind of Careful which finger you hold. Exactly. Up. It's kind of deceptive, <laughs> isn't it? That could, it could fool you. Uh, so the, the, the purple fingernail... Uh, um, Brings out your eyes. Yeah, you know, it, it's, it's a power color. You know, Whoopi Goldberg, uh, she talks about um, uh, purple in, in the movie. It's an awareness color um, brought to bear by some of the things that she's done as an entertainer. Uh, but at the same time, it's, uh, is it sign it's significant now because there's a promo out called Put the Nail in It. And it's the Put the Nail in It campaign against domestic violence and literally putting the nail in it so that you represent. And one of the things that I'm um, supporting in addition to this program is the awareness, being aware of who you are and what you're doing um, in your world and making sure that you uh, pay attention to the, your surroundings. So as men, let's pay attention to what we teach our kids, both our daughters and our sons, and so that they understand what's the right thing to do. And this is a way to represent that in putting a nail in it. And maybe by the end of the show, I get somebody else putting a nail in it. But, you know, it's a masculine-feminine conflict. I don't wear nail polish. This is the first time I've ever done this. Now, I have to admit, I painted my daughter's nails when she was small, but that's as close as I came to it. <laughs> Do I appreciate the cosmetic impact it has <laughs> on women that I, I know, in particular my wife and daughter? Well, of course I Absolutely. do. It's, exactly. But that's as far as I've gone. <laughs> but this is important to me. Um, it touches me personally. It has. Um, and um, in, my, in my family, and that's as about as much details I'll give you on that. So it's really important for me to support um, those who have suffered as a result of domestic violence. Uh, now, that being said, I also have to mention, as was pointed out to me this morning, it's not just a woman thing. And we talked about that here before. It's about human beings being kind to each other. So there are men out there that have been sexually abused or domestically abused, both verbally and physically. So let's not forget that it's not just a one-sided sword. It's a sword that has two edges, and we need to be aware of both of them. But the one that's most critical is for women and domestic violence and the impact on women. So, put a nail in it. All right, so moving on. World Series, here we go. World Series, Game 3 coming up in L.A. What's the big difference in Game 3 versus Games 1 and 2? Well, L.A. didn't win any of them. <laughs> and the other thing, it's going to be about 35 degrees hotter in L.A., so close to 80 versus close to 40 right. uh, compared to Boston. So that's one big thing, 35 degrees difference in the temperature. Uh, the Dodgers are definitely down 0-2. A couple of points I want to make. J.D. Martinez, uh, in uh, running an extra base hit, uh, slipped on second base as he came around and kind of damaged his ankle a little bit. So he was questionable for a while, but he will be, instead of in the infield, uh, J.D. will be in the outfield and playing right field as it stands today. Um, you've got some key things going on in their lineup with uh, Boston. One of them is J.D., whether he was going to play or not. The other one is the pitching. Uh, Rick Porcello uh, is the starting pitcher. Uh, you know, for me, that that's a that's probably a good choice as a coach. And look, I don't want to be the person that steps in and tries to second-guess a coach or gen general manager. 
But when you look at the facts about where Pacello has been and what he's done, um, in game three, probably a good place to put him uh, because you're two games up. And I'm trying to be very careful not to say anything disparaging about Rick and his his efforts on the mound. He's, he's a champion, and he's in the World Series. So that that goes a long way in, in substantiating uh, where, where he's at. Now, what's more important to me is what the Dodgers are doing. And the Dodgers are batting Jock Peterson as the number as a leadoff hitter and moving Chris Taylor down to the number seven hitter. Now that's not unfamiliar to, to Chris. In fact, uh, management for the Dodgers have used that very successfully in the past because Taylor is an impact hitter. He can hit the long ball. He gets he gets on base. His ball base percentage is very strong. Um, that that's huge. Uh, and so the focus for me is is on Chris Taylor as well as on Walker Bueller. Now there's a pick for pitching. Walker Bueller has some outstanding postseason stats. The guy uh, knows how to work his counts um, just like a hitter would. A pitcher is working his counts and what pitches he throws at what time uh, so that he's uh, maximizing his effectiveness on the mound. And Walker Bueller is one of the best at doing that. Um, so with that being said, I want you to take a look at the eyes, the focus on the eyes. I'm going to ask Big Josh here about that too, about focus and, and um, your, your attitude towards the plate. In Game 7, the Dodgers against Milwaukee had to win that game, just like Milwaukee had to win that game to go on the World Series. But when they took shots of the faces of the L.A. Dodgers and saw, and you looked at their eyes, you saw this intensity, this, this game face that was on. I mean, it literally was a game face that you could identify was, was intense. And Chris Taylor was one of those who was very intense with his look, as was people like, interestingly enough, Yasiel Puig. You know, he's kind of a kind of an interesting guy. Who 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 in baseball licks their back? He does. <laughs> he has a very personal relationship with his back, <laughs> right? But his his facial expressions and his connection to the game on that day in game seven was uh right there with uh, Chris Taylor and the rest of the LA Dodgers. Look for that in game three tonight. And that uh that's about all I gotta say about baseball today. Uh, it's going to be a good good time. It's uh, eight oh nine Eastern time or six oh nine. Um, how do you pick six oh nine? What's the oh nine for? I, it's got a, it's a television thing. It's on Fox uh, Fox Sports tonight. Uh, YouTube TV is also got it hooked in with the World Series Game Three uh, right in Colorado six oh nine on the West Coast five oh nine and obviously East Coast television uh, program people. It's eight oh nine. So. Tune in for Game 3 and look for the focus. Look for the mental toughness that represents that focus. All right, NFL. Got some got some changes. These are some crazy changes going on here. For those of you who follow NFL football, here's something for Denver fans. Be aware on December 15th, a little, little ways out, but the NFL's putting out there, on um, NFL Network, the game is an 8.20 p.m. game against Cleveland. It's a home game for Denver. Uh, on the 15th, but that's a that's kind of interesting. And it's Saturday. It's not a Sunday game or a Thursday game or a Monday game. It's a Saturday game on December 15th. Uh, and then the rest of the lineup on Sunday is there, as well as a, a, a interesting game, uh, the L.A. Chargers and Kansas City on the 13th. So that's a little bit advanced schedule, but um, that, that time change is very interesting. So uh, the NFL is doing some very interesting, and perhaps to some of us some crazy stuff, they're doing it again uh, during the holiday week of December 22nd uh, with, again, a Saturday game, uh, Washington versus Tennessee and uh, Baltimore at the L.A. Chargers are both Saturday times, similar to the Denver game. So, uh, very interesting stuff going on. All right. So, Josh, here we are. Here we are. KUHSDenver.com. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about, I mean, it, it's one, it's, it's obvious, right? You, you, you did the deal. You're one of the eight, but the story was it wasn't a lock. You had to wait to the last fight of the season to, to know if your points got you in. Exactly. And you got in. Yeah. And the first fight, I mean, we're going to summarize this fairly quickly. The first fight was, what would be a traditional fight for you. I mean, it's going, you know, if both, both fighters are doing their thing, strategizing. Taking the shots, uh, I think both of you were were getting in what you needed to get in and and and, and doing what you needed to do. So so take me through that a little bit from your perspective. 
as strategy when you're going through that fight. You know you've got another one if you win that one after that right away. So I'm guessing that didn't come into your mind when you fight. Yeah, definitely got to win the first one. Uh, so I'll, I'll say the way, uh, due to the commissions, you're only allowed uh, five, five rounds uh, yeah. per fighter a night. So uh, with them wanting to do this, the eight-man tournament, of course you can't do the three fights in one night because of that, but they were able to do the semifinals and quarterfinals the same night. And with that being said, the first fight was a two rounder, the second fight was a three rounder. Mm -hmm. So the so the way they scored the first fight, it, it was huge. It's uh if if it since there's only two rounds, if it winds up being a draw, they they go back and say whoever won the first round is the winner. Yeah. So the emphasis for me on that fight was come out, be aggressive. Uh, whatever happens, win the first round. Because mm -hmm. the second round, now it's up to him to finish. To, yep. Uh, yep. To to do that. So yeah, um, that's that's what was nice. Even uh, I, I saw the last it was like a minute minute thirty five seconds or so. The in the second round, he held me up against the cage, and I just sat there and held him. And I told my wrestling coach, uh, I'm like, man, I could I could get off, but I also knew if the only way he's going to win is if he puts me. And sitting in that close, there's no way. Yeah, yeah. And, and the announcers kind of made comments to that about your, your strategy. It was very obvious that you were, your strategy was that. But did that mean also in the first round when you sat between the two rounds, did you kind of have an idea that you had the first round? You'd won the first round? You felt good about that? Yeah. Yeah, I was, I was a good 99% sure from the, the octagon control, me pushing the tempo. Yeah. Coming forward. Uh, I, first round, I held him up against the cage, uh, way more than he did, you know, and just positionally, uh, damage, you know, I was, I was throwing more of the damage shots. Well, and you're, I mean, I, I noticed that there was a little bit more offensive effort on your part when you, when you, you are typically known as a counter puncher. That's, yeah. that's one of your strengths. You're good at it. Uh, but I, I saw some offensive initiation on your part to your point about being aggressive early, get that first round under your belt. Um, did, did you did you make any changes in your training to, to give you a better chance of being offensive? Like I noticed they mentioned uh, cutting your footwork was also, better. I'll, and it's funny. I, uh, I, I started working with my old kickboxing coach, Brian Young. Mm -hmm. And after the Sean Jordan fight, uh, I, I remember going to him. I'm like, man, I don't understand. Like, uh, I, it's been forever since I've had a knockout and whatnot. And, and Brian, Brian Young just told me, he's like, Josh, it's because you're being la lazy with your legs. Oh. And I'm standing straight tall with my legs, uh, not bending them. And, uh, he's all, all you're doing is getting the rotation of your core and the extension of your arm. He's like, you gotta bend those legs and use the drive from your, from your legs too, and sure enough, yeah, I went out there. And, um, the few weeks leading up to it, I, I really tried to start staggering lower. You know, try to yeah. be be more of a goal. Well, the practice became habit because you didn't lose that impact in the second the yeah. second match. I mean, you stayed strong with your, your not only your footwork, but the the leg bent. You were, you were, as I say to all of my athletes, ready to be ready. Yeah. Uh, and in those, those sports like basketball, boxing, soccer, uh, you know, you gotta get a good, good stance, good Absolutely. fighter stance. Uh, and that was definitely, uh, showing. So we are, we are in our, um, uh, segment where we talk about the mindset and how you get your mindset prepared. So I want to expand that a little bit, um, on, uh, your, uh, your thoughts about, you know, there's mental toughness. That's a buzz phrase and there's resilience. I'm not, I'm gonna ask you a tough question. Make a choice. Which one do you, which one do you prepare for most often? Setting your mind up or about being resilient in the comeback? Cause you're, when you're a counter puncher, so I'm just thinking you might be predisposed to be more focused on being resilient. You know, ways to get, recover quickly versus the other one, which is stalwart, strong, focused at all times. Which one would you pick? <laughs> that's, that's a tough one. Yeah. You need both, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, 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 the power of the mind is something that I don't even think any of us can even understand yet. You know, so I, I definitely say that 
the mental toughness I've like that for sure. Yeah, it's interesting that you say that because I didn't want to predict, but I wanted to put you in that place to, to try to make a choice. And you're right. They, in my world of training, uh, the mind, it's, it's a, it's a simultaneous thing. And one comes up before another based on circumstance. Right. So when you practice, when you're preparing, do we prepare with that reality in mind? So do I put myself in a drill situation or a sparring situation that pushes me with both? Right. You know, where, okay, he, he slipped me one, got me in there with a practice punch because I wanted him to. How, how do I respond to that? How do I recover from that? And then from there, it's the mental toughness to get yourself back into that place, yeah. to find your footwork, find your counterpunch, whatever that is, in seconds. Yes. And then it could be the other side, you're just getting in the ring. You're, maybe you're just walking to the, the, the octagon and, and getting ready. That's the mental toughness part. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to ask you about not so much the ring, but the influence of what's happening outside the ring up to this next fight. This is the first time you've been here. <laughs> this is new territory for you. So how has the promotional pieces that what PFL is asking you to do and, and I've asked you to do, I mean, you've got more attention, deservedly so, but is that, what kind of changes and, and challenges is that presenting for you? That's, I mean, it's like you said, it's it's all pretty brand new to me. I know uh, right, right after I won, uh, PFL, told me, hey, our next event's in Long Beach. Uh, we need you there to do PR stuff. Yeah. And we'll come out, meet and greet, do all that. And then same thing, hey, next event's in Washington, D.C. need you there. Uh, I've already done a bunch of interviews. And, yeah, it's just funny how, I don't know, like, right now it's everything's pretty time consuming. Yeah. It's here, there, and I, I, I try to just make it work with my schedule. So that I, I'm going to guess that the training schedule takes priority for sure. And and you're I'm, I'm guessing you're not fully backed into it yet because you've got a little bit of time. But are you kind of going to get into your more routine schedule here very quickly to stay strong no, for the next so, two and a half months? So I'm I'm already pretty much uh, going to all the practices. Um, uh, right now I'm just text sparring, you know, yep. just, just touching, uh, moving around. And, we're, uh, to me, it's it, it goes with the saying, you know, if you don't get out of shape, you don't have to get into shape. No, exactly. So for me, it's hey, I, I got the biggest fight of my life coming up, and uh, was that ten weeks? Yeah, around nine and a half or so. Yeah, um, yeah, and it's let's let's stay stay active, let's keep moving that way. It's uh, yeah. Time to go. So when you're on that, when you did that little promotional mm-hmm. junket to the West Coast and one went back to Washington D.C., what do you do in between the, the calls to go on mic? Are you, are you doing some running, or you? I mean, obviously, I'm going to guess you're eating the same and you're trying to stay nutritionally sound. Yeah. What, are there any any challenges with maintaining that with that busy schedule? Are you talking while while I'm traveling? Yeah, um, while you're traveling. Yeah. So so I've I've got on a routine where I'm trying to do. 100 squats a day, just air squats, yeah, body, yeah. body weighted. Uh, just try to go continuously, you know, uh, trying to get uh, 100 push ups, my, uh, my, uh, get my core going every day, just doing a little something just to keep the body moving. You know? And then simple shadow boxing. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's amazing how, I mean, what, what you can do just uh, without having a person there or having a bag to hit. It's, it's amazing how much you can still train your mind and yeah. get a phenomenal workout in. Well, and, and the world of health and wellness has taught us that you could go to the grocery store and get cans of peas and, right. and use them as your weight training. You know, it, doesn't, it doesn't have to be expensive right. to, to get a good workout, or it doesn't have to be a lot of time. Right. You know, Just get the heart rate up, You know, start doing what you need to do to, to make it happen. So it sounds like you're getting it fit you're in, you know, whether it's a hotel room or, you know, you're walking to a gig to do some talking, you're, you're, you're staying, staying focused with that. And now you're getting back into the more routine aspects of the training program. When do you, when do you think you're going to start to, to do the more intense workouts where you're actually getting in the ring and sparring with partners and, and, you know, getting the skills? Cause you've got an interesting opponent. Yeah. Nicholson's a, he's legit. 
No, lens. Or lens. What, I had the wrong guy out there? It, it was, oh, that was the one that I That's the one you knocked out. Yeah. yeah. Okay, lens, yeah. No, so I'll, uh, I've, I've got a little vacation plan. Okay. Uh, going to Costa Rica. Nice. November 2nd through the 8th. And then uh, I want to say when I get back on the 8th, people with seven weeks and four days, seven weeks, three days. Yeah. So basically, I'll have pretty much seven weeks in my table. So, uh, it'll be, it'll be perfect. That's, that's when I'll tighten up everything. And nice. And yeah, get ready to walk and go. Well, I'm, and with that, I'm going to pause just a minute and talk a little bit about, uh, some of the, the folks that support us and the things that they can offer us. But, um, also pointing out that, you know, look, if you get in the ring, it's fighting. It's, it's just two components going at each other. And one might think, well, it's not like, what, what's kind of thinking is involved in that? The fact that you just mentioned that, that planning process, that the fit of the time frame to get the things in you need, that's calculated. That's right. statistics, uh, as a, a tactic, a strategy. Um, so I think you might think that fighting is a, it's, it's rough and tough in it, but it's simple and it's movement and it's process, but to get there, it's rather complicated. It's to get the body where it needs to be, the mind and the body connected, uh, those are all good things. So in my my effort to do that here at uh, KUHS and 360 Performance Talk, we've got a, a couple of folks that help us out. Um, we're looking at uh, our germ block, the antiseptic, germicide, good stuff here. Got to make sure we take a look at that. You can get that at avcare.com. It's germ block. It's alcohol-free. That's the point. That's why I like this because it's not going to hurt the environment. Um, it's, uh, it's a green footprint as you can get with a germicide. And it feels like a lotion. It's good stuff. The other one, um, and the teacher, I looked at Josh's, uh, uh, scar above his right eye. He got, got a pretty good, uh, ding in his eye. And we're going to talk a little bit about that impact in the, in the fight game with PFL and the lead that they've got and what that means to that. But we've got Empower, uh, body, uh, care products. Uh, you can get this at empowerbodycare.com and try their slogan. Put it where it hurts. It's CBD based. You can get it online. And I'm going to give you a little bit of an insight here. If you use LW010, that's a discount code from me to you uh, to help you get started on using stuff that helps the aches and pains, whether they're big aches and pains like this guy's got or little aches and pains, uh, the CBD product has a wonderful healing process to it, uh, helps to minimize the discomfort, uh, take care of uh, little cosmetic things and, sh- and reducing the, the uh, inflammation. In Infl- place there's an inflammation. I, my sister used to on a mosquito bite, and it worked. So reduce the itch. Irritation was gone. That's an inflammation. So any place you have an inflammation, like bumps and bruises, empowerbodycare.com. And LW010. People, LW010. Okay. So, Josh, when you're home with your son, does he become a barbell? Right. <laughs> Pretty much, man. You, you, you press the little guy a little he, bit? He loves it. He's, <laughs> he's, he's all boy. He loves the climb. He loves the fly. I throw him in the air. Yeah. He loves everything. So, so how, how old is he? Is he five? He's five. Yeah. So, is he in school full day? Yeah. Over here. Nice. So, this is the question for moms and dads. When you have your dad is in the business he's in, does he get to does he get to watch the fights? Uh, so not he, he's never been to a live one. Yeah, but I I, I showed him uh, the knockout punch, some of the videos and stuff. Yeah, in the past he uh, it, it always be like yeah, yeah, and then toys. Yeah, they're a tennis fan. And then uh, it was cool this time because I, I gave him a little shout out uh, when they were interviewing me at the very end. Yeah. Uh, I, I fast forwarded to show him the knockout and then let him listen to when I, when I said said his name on air and all that. He uh, I'm sitting in my lap and then he just laid down in my arm and and I'm all, did you hear that? And he's all, yeah. And yeah. I'm all, well, uh, I said, who, who was I talking about? Me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it, it was cool. He, uh, That's very cool. And I asked him, did, did you like that? And he's like, yeah. Because he, he was, uh, he made mention the other day, he's like, Dad, you're always flying places and you never take me. And I'm like, oh, that 
hurts. Yeah, you know, like, hey, yeah. Just because I'm going places doesn't mean I'm not thinking about it. So. There you go. That's good connection. That's for moms and dads to remember that. Make the connection because many times it's not the contact time, it's the quality time. Yeah. And, and a quality announcements like that and him, giving him a chance to recognize that he got it and connect with that, that's good stuff. That's a complete circle yeah. of the connection. So are they gonna are they gonna go with you to New York? Uh I don't know. Yeah. I don't. That's still up in the air. Um, yeah. I Is mean, it I, scheduling job job schedule kind of stuff that's in the way or are there other options? I mean it's just it's a busy time. <laughs> so yeah. It's, uh, yeah. It might be one of those things where I just need to go take care of business. Come back. You go. take you take care of that business. You go anywhere you want, son. Don't go on a vacation after that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you can you can lock and load and go anywhere you want after that. That's yeah. that's really cool. Well, you know, on that particular note, um, that's a that's a family's call. Uh, but you can you can bet that NBC Sports uh, Network is going to give a good uh, look at that on New Year's Eve at the at the uh, Madison Square Gardens in New York City. So. Whether he's with you or they're with you or not in, in person, they're going to be able to have a chance to take a look at what, what the fight's all about. That's, um, mm-hmm. And and thinking about it from a, a dad, granddad sort of perspective, it's going to be a late night if they're out there because you're the heavyweights are at the end, right? It is, but it'll be daytime fights. That that way, it's not competing with uh, oh maybe but, parties, ball dropping parties, all that stuff. Oh, so nice. Yeah, it's not a. It's not like they're going to be trying to do this at 11 o'clock at night. Okay, so give the listeners that kind of span. So the, it, it is the, the lighter weights go first. So I, I don't know not. who's going to go first. So that's I, mean, I, 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 would, I would assume you know, they're going to go from light to heavy. Yeah. But that's, they might mix us up or whatnot. Because, I mean, every, every fight's going to be for the million. Every fight's the championship uh, of belts being handed out. You know, so... So for me, but there's only one cuddly bear, Josh. Come on, there's only one heavyweight. Yeah, champion. exactly. And there's only one heavyweight who's knocked out his opponent to get to the championship. Yeah. So you you got some you got some juice here. But they, yeah. they, on the media side of things, they got to squeeze that juice to make it work. Right. So I would imagine, I would hope that you're going to be that that crescendo at the end. Yeah. To bring it, you we'll know, see. and bring so you know. We'll see. Well, yeah. But I I I do know that it'll be during the daytime. Yeah. So hope. Hopefully we'll be done and out by four or five o'clock. Oh, that's sweet. Hopefully, don't, yeah, yeah. Don't quote me on those times, but uh, I know, I know for sure they're not trying to compete with the local people trying to watch it right, live, right. and then everyone else who gets together for the. Well, and that's probably a smart move from a broadcasting standpoint. I mean, you know, just safety and event management and all that kind of stuff. So we will give you more information about those details as they come up to us uh, going forward. You've got seven and well. About nine weeks of time to wait um, uh, for that, um, and so that that can I, let's talk a little bit about PFL because they're 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 a relatively new model in the business of Ultimate Fighting. Yeah, um, and it's I, I quite honestly it's got me drawn more into it. Now I, I've been an old WFL guy from years ago, you know, rock, Rowdy Roddy Piper <laughs> kind of thing, the Hulk. You know, that's my genre, right. uh, so I'm, I'm interested in it. But I, you know, I kind of lost touch with it. it wasn't all that exciting. Uh, but this has got my attention. Uh, it's a faster pace. Uh, it processes well. It keeps you engaged. You yeah. we play, watching the points. Um, I think they've got. I think they've got something here. Um, what has been your feedback from fans and your travels out there about that model and is it working? Man, I, I would say 100%. I haven't heard one person, not, not one negative thing. And that's, to me, to be a part of the PFL and to actually, I mean, they're, they're doing a great job of uh, getting our names out there, getting people to know us, this and that. And on top of that, they're, they're paying us. Yeah. You know, it's like we chatted about before, you know, it's so nice to make real paychecks. Yeah. You know, and actually have money where I'm not living fight to fight to fight. It's, <laughs> I'm, I'm good for a little while if, if I don't fight. You know? yeah. So uh, it's it's cool to be a part of a promotion who's actually going to take care of the fighters. Well, and taking care of them means amounts that you can bank. It's not just living. It's it's live and then bank something right. so that you can survive to the next fight or to the next venture, whatever that might be. 
Um, because I know you and I have talked about prior to that, the, the journeys between the different leagues or different, uh, the, the, uh, endorsement people that you know, you, whether it's UFC or whatever it is, that the bracketing of what they paid you is, I mean, unbelievable. <laughs> it's a slap in the face. Well, yeah. yeah it would, if they really knew what you went through to get to that place and deliver the kind of performance you deliver, they, they would be insulted right. by the amounts they get. So PFL has really taken a, a good big step towards uh, endearing the, the athletes to them and drawing them in. And with a the, with the quality event, I, I'm really pleased with what I see with NBC Sports and that that uh, play. Uh, yeah. And the, the professionals, the sport of professionals that are kind of wrapping their arms around the PFL. Um, so it's a testament to those who, who structured it. And, they, and PFL's got some good money behind it. They do. It's an organization that delivers. Yeah, it's, it's cool. Even like guys like Kevin Hart, you know, he's... Uh, he's He's, he's one of the financial backers behind it. Yeah. They're behind it. Like, he loves the model. Believes in it. He's been doing the PFL commercials. Do they give Kevin Hart a booster chair at the I, arena? I I've never seen him. They're, they're, they're doing their, <laughs> they're doing that filming in Holly, Hollywood or something. I, I'll be the one who takes the <laughs> shot. You know, <laughs> but I love Kevin Hart. Don't get me wrong. I love seems him. Seems like a riot. Yeah, yeah, he's doing some great stuff. But he's got some game shows on that he's backing. PFL support. Yeah. Uh, he's got a, a new movie out, uh, but he he's he is uh, vertically challenged. So it just it's, it's, it's fun. It, the Jumanji movie. Yeah. Was. <laughs> well, have you watched? Oh yeah, movie? several times actually. Oh, I and, love it. Yeah, and and you know with the Rocky and the Rock have yeah. done a couple of movies together, uh, and there's always a you know, whether it's ad lib or, or scripted, there's always a line in there about. Height differentials, right, and or strength differentials. Who's the more powerful? And then when they did that in Jumanji and flip flopped it, that that was just so yeah. Perfect. Well, it was a great way for those two guys to play off of it. Absolutely. Um, we're we're a little past the half hour. Uh, I want to remind everybody you're listening to KUHSDenver.com. I'm Lowell White, your host of 360 Performance Talk. I'm here with Josh Cuddly Bear Copeland. Just want to remind you the tagline is enjoy the hugs, but beware of the paws. Love the cuddles. Exactly. Love the cuddles. Beware of the paws. I love that. Who, now, was that the announcer for PFL that did that? Who, who no, Jim, uh, my buddy Justin Wren came up that. Uh, he's got a, a trademark that. Put on a t-shirt or something. That's that's epic. I, I mean, that fits. I mean, that 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 little bear thing you've got, that image, and put that yeah. at the bottom. That just that's just so cool. Okay, so say it again for me. Cuddle. What is it? Love the cuddles. Yeah. Fear the pods. There we go. Love the cuddles. Fear the pods. Danger. I'm a hugger. That's, that's <laughs> what you like to know there, people. Okay. So we're having some fun here. Loving what we're doing. Um, you know what? I think I made a mistake. Oh, look. <laughs> Hi, people. Now that I pushed the right button. Uh-oh. Was it off? We got captured. We got so many cameras here, Josh. <laughs> it's unbelievable. But when it's my own, right. I screw it up. So welcome everybody. <laughs> uh, Josh Copeland, Josh Culliver Copeland. Uh, love the cuddles, fear the pause. That's the tagline. So we're at the half hour. We've. Uh, I just want to remind everybody about EmpowerBodyCare.com. Uh, if you want this, use my discount LW010. Uh, and uh, it can, you can buy it online, and they'll send it to you right to your house. Uh, great for any inflammations, bumps, and bruises. Take care of that. Now, look, I can only imagine you've gone through a whole just kaleidoscope of emotions since the win. And and is that a challenge? I mean, I, kind of getting it stabilized and focused a little bit. Or has it just been going so fast you haven't bothered to think? No, I, I, I would say, I mean, I, I don't know that it's been a challenge. It's, it's more the, uh, just the surreal aspect of trying to wrap my head around, did that really just happen? <laughs> you know, like, I'm, I'm not lying for the first week. Even, uh, I, I remember sitting there walking around in Long Beach and, like, I'm just sitting there looking around. I'm like, holy cow, like, I just had the feeling for a week straight that I was dreaming and I was going to wake up anytime. Yeah. You know? yeah. And for me, I mean, yeah, it's it's like uh, Boss Rutten and Randy Couture was saying, like, man, it's it's a long journey from Josh Copeland's couch talking 
just talking about how, like you said earlier, I didn't know if I was going to be in the playoffs yeah. or not, sitting there with my son, watching watching it unfold. And, uh, the fact that it went the distance and went the way that I needed it, I, w- I felt just honored and blessed in that regard. And then the fact that I was able to go out and fight, not just fight two fights, but win two fights yeah. in a night with so many different variables that could go wrong. I mean, I'm just, I was still sitting there just in disbelief, you know? Yeah. Well, you know, I, I want to, a lot of times for me, when I have, whether it's a team or a player, that's transitioning from one, like the season, to then the playoffs, you know, as a team. Like you've got, you know, the Dodgers from playoffs to now the World Series and Milwaukee lost, okay? Manage those emotions. And now you've got the other, the Dodgers managing those emotions and shifting from a seven game series in Milwaukee and then have to turn around a couple days later and, and play Boston in Boston. Right. It's, you know, how, how do you get that? That mindset. Now, <clears throat> I'm only dealing with one or two players. I don't. I don't get to deal with the team, but I, I could just see in some of the mind, the faces that were shown on television with the Dodgers, they were feeling the impact of that emotional transition, and things like environment, the temperature, right. and the adjustments to that, and the fact that oh, we won of the series and we get slammed in that first game, and we make it a little tighter the second game, but you could see the resolve was wasn't quite there. So. Are, are you are you considering things more a little differently in your emotional managing those emotions going into training? Because I I recommend to my guys take those feelings from that tough, arduous, physically challenging process and and wrap your arms around them, really understand them and bring them into that training right. to really you know galvanize your resolve. Have you thought about that process at all going into training and using those emotions, using that that Dreamlike state, right? To your to your benefit. Yeah, I mean, for for me, it's the the opportunity that I have coming up is it's almost like that's my coffee in the morning. Yeah, you know, and and for me, it's uh, I'm to be honest, I'm going into this fight with with a lot of confidence, and that's uh, you know, a lot of times I'll doubt myself or different things, you know, and and right now, man, I'm. I fully believe that I I can win this. You know, it, it's not gonna. I don't feel like I need to go out there and need a lucky punch. Yeah. Or something. I, I truly believe that I can I can beat this guy. And I can. Uh, yeah, I can put him away, or I can win a five round decision. Yeah. I, I well, and let me let me reinforce this. Not that you haven't already fought through it, but in the early stages, the commentators when they looked at the film in the night and they're replaying it over and over again. You know, they're, they're asking questions. Oh, how did that, that was a lucky punch he got in there that, you know, he was, they were dancing around and, and, you know, and, and he, he did some jabbing and, and you shifted and then you just threw this punch from wherever it came from. And I'm listening to that language and I'm going, nah, nah, no, watching what's going on there and the, and the movement around the octagon up to that point. He had countered some of your, your jabs and then he threw some shots that didn't connect. And you use those shots. I mean, I could just see the way, and I've watched you enough to, to kind of be able to pick it apart. That that was a counterpunch that you knew you were throwing. Oh, one hundred percent. It was not a like, oh, I think I'm going to throw this now. I hope I hit something. Oh, that was my bread and butter. Yeah, and it it was a controlled. And, and you're, I mean, you're a long swinger anyway in many regards. Uh, in certain situations like that, the context that was there, but you could just see the control. Of the pitch of that throw, and and the, your footwork matched it. I mean, you had as your as your uh, sparring partner said, you got legs and hips and core in the whole thing. Right. I mean, it, and it was not a. I think I'm knocked out. It was like, uh oh, I just got hit and I'm I'm gone. Right. I mean, he just boop boop with that pause and the fall, and there was not a lot of movement <laughs> when he was well, to, on the mat. To me, he's he's good. Because he's uh, aggressive and he's wild. Yeah. I mean, the, the guy really doesn't set stuff up from this, all the spinning stuff, uh, his, his flying, jumping knees, this and that. He, he doesn't set it up. He just randomly throws it. And that's why it works half the time because most guys are like, uh, we shouldn't do that right now. And you know, it's kind of like the guy that 
punches out here to punch you in the face. You know, it's like, yeah, why did I look? Why did I look over there? You know, like, like it shouldn't work, but sometimes it does. But yeah, man, I'm I'm not lying. When, when it came to Alex, I I absolutely love that that matchup. Like, he's he's aggressive and just wild. Well, I love for guys to come. Well, and I and I know you do, and I'm not gonna let this point go. I'm gonna keep working on it because. The, the commentators, were, they're going to try to give you more credit going into this next fight about being a calculated fighter. You watch for your opportunities because that's what a counterpuncher does. But at the same time, I think we were amazed and, and surprised at the offensive intent you had. Yeah. That heretofore, you hadn't really shown that offensive intent. You were waiting for the other fighter to do something before you responded. Right. Um, and so more of a defensive footwork, a defensive posturing, to set your counter punches up. So I I just saw a more complete Josh Copeland come to the mat that you always had it, it just now it was actually part of the fight. Right. Uh, and, and as you said, it works works really well with this this crazy flailing kind of guy yeah. uh, coming up. So with that being said, let's transition then to the, the, the guy that you're gonna face on New Year's Eve in New York City at the Madison Square Gardens. Um, what what are you what are you looking for with that? So I'm I'm fighting Felipe Lins and he he is uh he's from Brazil. He's been living in uh in Miami for the last year and a half. And he's he's good man. He's a he's a jujitsu black belt. Uh yeah, uh, apparently he's one of the instructors down at APP and taking that creek down there. Mm-hmm. Which APP's one of the largest mm-hmm. gyms. A lot of talent that comes out of there. And so he's he's a stud on the ground, and uh, man, he's got good crisp uh, striking too. So yeah. it is uh it is to me it's going to be a great test. It's a uh, it's it's I don't know. I I, I love I just love to beat. So. And you're going to trade for five. Yes, you always do. You trade for the whole fight for sure. So you your your five rounds of preparation coming up uh, it, to go against this this. This competitor, uh, Mr. Lins, uh, F- Felipe has been known to be. Um, uh, I'll use my jujitsu. I mean, I'm sorry. I'll use uh, more traditional fighter moves, standing up to set up my jujitsu to get you into submissions or to get you into holds because he's pretty confident with that. Is that something you're preparing for? Or is that on target with what I've heard, or there's yeah, something I mean, more? To, to me, he's he has you know. I mean, just from what I've seen, he it's, he's not coming from some collegiate wrestling background. Yeah. And, and to be honest, I mean, it's, it doesn't matter how good your striking is. If your wrestling's not good enough to keep it on the feet, you're, you're, you're done for. Uh, doesn't matter how good your jiu-jitsu is. If the wrestling's not good enough to get it to the ground, you're yeah. done for. So, and, uh, for me, it's, that's, that's where I feel like I have improved the most is on my wrestling. And, uh, I'm not saying you can't take me down, but, I'd be surprised if he does, and I better get up and do it. Well, and I, I think that goes without saying with the, the, the art of the fight. You don't want to get yourself on the ground against somebody who's pretty good at that, for sure. And if you can get up, get up as quickly as you can. But I notice a body type difference that may play in your favor. You know, as, as strong and as thick as you are from the waist up, that broadness and that strength in that upper body, not to say that your legs aren't strong too, but it just it just seems to match up better against Felipe, who's a little bit more elongated, and I'm not playing he's taller than you, it's just that that thickness throughout seems to be uh, maybe not as, as beneficial to him as having, say, a real thicker upper body to counteract you, because if, if you're coming at him offensively, you're going to have a little bit more mass and power on the upper side than what he might have. Uh, and not to imply anything about his striking power. He's got good striking power. But it just seems there's just, there's just a little bit of physicality Benefit that you might have if you if you if you're utilizing it in a in a way that's going to counteract him. What are you, what are your thoughts about that? I, I, man, it's to me it's it's catch twenty two. You're you're uh, I mean, there's pros and cons to both. Yeah. I mean, he's he'll, he'll be a little thinner and uh, longer. You know, he's I won't say he's two inches taller than me, and he's got a seventy nine inch reach, and I got seventy five. So yeah. he's got a four inch reach on me, so he can touch me when when I can't touch him. And so for me, it's, uh, I mean, you're right. I can be, I can be a bull going forward, but you know, I mean, you can 
reduce his speed. Yeah. Or work too. So, I mean, that's, that's what'll be fun. You know, hopefully, uh, hopefully it goes in my favor. Well, I, <laughs> I look at whether or not you get the final tally at the end in your favor. The fact that you step in the ring is a huge win. Yeah. That you get a chance to be in that place to compete for a million bucks. Madison Square Garden. Yeah, I mean, New Year's Eve. I mean, that's a that's a huge <laughs> venue, not only for PFL but for for you, your career going forward. Um, I, I'm just I feel so uh, blessed to be part of just knowing who you are and what you've done, and, and to see the improvements, man. I mean, it's one thing to have wins and losses, but to see the, the journey you've taken, yeah, and that that just that's really impressive to me. Um, so you mentioned Madison Square Garden. Let's talk about Madison Square Garden. It's an impressive place. I mean, it's like in the heart of the city. Yeah. Um, how does environment influence you, or does it? I wouldn't say it does. Yeah. That's when when I'm walking through that tunnel, about to go out there. It's uh. I'm 100% focused on fight. Yeah. You know, just, uh, I mean, to me, the place, it doesn't matter if I'm fighting at the local bar, you know, in front of a bunch of cowboys or, yeah, or, uh, you know, MSG, you know, it's, uh, the pressure's still on. You know, it's all about getting that W. All right. How much time do you have from the time you arrive in New York City until the fight? I don't know. That's, uh, I mean, I'm looking at the calendar. And, you know, they usually fly us out to get five days before or so, and I'm sitting there thinking, they better not fly us out on Christmas. Hopefully they'll, hopefully they'll fly us out on the 26th. Yeah. You know, maybe the 27th. Yeah. Um, yeah. They do if, Christmas. If you were in charge of it, I, I understand that it's not Christmas time, but what would be the ideal amount of time before a fight in, in this case, this, this set of context, for you to get out there? What, it's, so, so being in this position, I don't know what type of media and pictures and mm -hmm. uh, open workouts and all that stuff they're going to be having us do. So I don't know the extent of that. Uh, but I mean, for, for a normal fight, it's nice to be out there. I'd say at least the day before weigh-ins. Yeah. You know, that way you got a day to get your bearings, see where, yeah. see where coffee is. And yeah. <laughs> what not. And then, uh. Clock is an important yeah, thing, yeah. Josh. And then, then, you know, at least, <laughs> at least get your bearings that day and then, you know, uh, yeah. the are the next and then the fights are next. So. Uh, I gotta make some comments. Lee Beard, thanks a lot, buddy, for joining in. I wish I would have gotten it tuned in sooner. Um, you got some amazing trout you're catching, brother. Lee Beard is a guy that I know from NHRA days and he is a consummate fisherman. Oh, nice. He lives out in Summit County. Um, he's from, he's a local, he's a Colorado boy, boy, uh, but has traveled all over the country, all over the world. And I, I'm guessing you probably have your fishing rod in your pocket. Um, but, uh, he, he just has some great, great pictures of his adventures on the, on the, uh, waterways of, uh, Colorado. So welcome. Thanks for sh showing up today for us. Uh, reminds me again, we're talking to you at KUHSDenver.com. I'm your host, Lowell Whiteman at 360 Performance Talk. I'm with one of, one of the finest athletes, um, in his sport, but also a good representative of just being a competitor and just processing as a competitor what he knows is the right thing to do to get him to the place where he's the best. And recently, Josh Cubbyberg Copeland has just gathered in the fruits of that effort and that, that uh, performance to reward him for all that hard work. Um, and you can't do it alone. I mean, yeah, you're in the ring alone, but a lot of great people brought you there. Absolutely. So who's in your corner? Uh, physically in the physically corner? Physically in the corner. I, I had, uh, uh, my head coach, which is Ryan Schultz. Okay. He, he, uh, he owns Trials Mixed Martial Arts in Fort Collins. I'm up there four days a week, uh, working with him. And then I had, uh, my kickboxing coach, Brian Youngs, uh, who's, yeah, he's he's a stud. Yeah. He's under understands so much about striking, and yeah, he's yeah he's awesome. I, the phrase I always loved about striking was, "It's not two, it's through." Oh, I don't and, know that. Okay. Yeah, because if if it's strike two, you don't necessarily have everything of you in it. And right. If you strike through, it's 
what it says. Yeah. You strike through. through. So it's a mindset. Strike through, not to. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know if you, but that's, in my, I, I used to do some Muay Thai and I switched to karate because I'm old and crotchety. So <laughs> I can't do that, that kicking stuff that well, I can, but I can't take it on my body as like I used to. Uh, so back in the day, that was, I still use that with, uh, whether it's uh, baseball players or hitting, it's strike two is not what you want. You want to strike through. Through, not two. But your corner is important to you. Absolutely. Um, and is it different? Is your corner different than a boxing corner? Because in a boxing, they have, like, there's a, there's the trainer, the boxing skill person, and then there's that person that takes care of you, one in between rounds person. What are some of the duties the corner is doing for you? That's, I mean, from, they, I mean, it's nice being at this level. You got your, you know, they, they hire uh, the, the company. Yeah. So they, you, no matter what, you've got a professional person in the corner stopping yeah. uh, cuts like that. But I mean, basically, for me, if if uh, it's more of a grappling round, I, I want to hear from my grappling coach. Yep. You know, hey, yep. Just just an extra set of eyes because there's a difference in what I'm feeling and what I can see, and then there's that difference of what they can see from the outside perspective. Yeah. So it's nice to hear, uh, you know, striking, hear from a strike coach, the things that he sees. Hey, look for this. It's it's open when you're doing that. Yeah. Whatnot. So, but I mean, besides that, they're they're there to, yeah, just lift me up and yeah. Help me and, and they're they're immediately outside the ring um, and have a, a position with where your stool is at when they. Open up and, and get in um, the ring. Uh, this is a time when I want to I'm going to do a little a promo, but not a promo. It's related to focus and attention to details. Because you said this perspective, right? And yeah. there's your perspective in the ring, and there's their perspective. In each of those cases, there is a sensitivity uh, of the of the details, so you can have good response time in a timely fashion. Well, back in the back a few years ago, I with football team, I was concerned about response time and paying attention to details and being in the moment, staying in the now kind of mindsets. And I designed a, an app called Time to Focus. It's a free app on iTunes. And basically what it does is it gets your brain going huh. and, and, and responsive. So if you go into iTunes, and I'm, I'm playing with my phone here, and you go and you, you, get, you get this. There's a little 30-second little thing right there, a little 30-second thing. That's the icon. And it's a little bit bigger when it's like that, okay? And you've got that on there. And that's time to focus. So what it does is it gets you to a choice of either 30 or 60 seconds. You can pick how fast you, you get 30 seconds to find as many numbers as you can. Yeah. So when you start it, um, I'll pick 60 seconds because I'm old and I'm slower. It takes time. It takes time, exactly. Time to focus. Yeah. So it gives you a number. In this case, it gave me 37. It's my first number. Pick 37. So when I push start, I've got to find 37, and then 38, and 39, and 40, and so on, uh -huh. as fast as I can. Get as many numbers as I can. If I get 10 numbers five times, I get to go to the next level. Oh. Okay? So i got seven levels here. Now, it looks like a game. It acts like a game. But it's a psychological tool to get the mind clicking. Right. Get you ready. Takes you like, you know, 60 seconds or 30 seconds. I recommend my athletes take like two, three minutes prior to an event in the locker room just to run through this, get the brain kind of cranking because it sticks with you. It sticks with you. So when you go into that and I push start, this is level four. Now notice here that on level four, the numbers are moving and they're colored. See them spinning? They're spinning. The numbers are spinning and turning. And that's that's a little higher thing, so I'm, I'm wasting time here. So I got to find 37, and what's what's going to happen is your brain gets in a process of looking for it. And while you're doing that, you're also finding oh, 30 seconds. I'm going backwards. 38 is what I want, then 39 and 40, and so on. So I could I'll just let it continue to go. But that that whole process, when I had color and movement and stuff, that's the challenges the life gives you. Right. So like in the ring, if you're at level four and you're seeing movement and jerseys and banners and you, you, all these things go through your eyes and you're trying to stay focused on certain things, that's what this game does. Right. That's awesome. Get you focused. So yeah, time yeah. time to focus on iTunes, 
I don't have it for Android phones yet. Uh, just haven't bothered. I think I got an iPhone. Yeah, there you go. Give it a try. It's a great, it's a great prep. And what's it called? Time to focus. Right, spell it out. Time to focus. Uh, yeah, it's it's. <laughs> I can remember that. So we are once again. I remind you, we're we're talking we're talking here with Josh Cubby Bear Copeland. Uh, he's going to go for the million dollar prize at PFL uh, the, the, the playoffs are over. It's the million dollar championship in, in New York City at MSG, the Madison Square Gardens, um, on the 31st of December, 2018. Uh, tune in on NBC Sports Network. Uh, we're going to be continuing to talk about it uh, and, and sharing information about. Uh, Josh's travels uh, between now and December 31st. We'll get you details about the show broadcast, the times, uh, and when when it's uh, going to be aired on NBC Sports Network. Um, I'm hoping it's an afternoon live broadcast. I'm hoping, but we'll sure. Yeah. I'll, I'll get a hold of PFL and find out about that. We got about five minutes uh, to the hour of noon. Uh, as you know, every Friday at 11 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. We are uh, broadcasting our show, 360 Performance Talk, here at KUHSDenver.com. Uh, so grateful to everybody that joins us. Uh, and Henry, Henry Monk is a friend of yours. Yeah, I yeah. just hooked up with Henry today on Facebook. He's a great guy. Yeah, he was a source of a great video for me today, the the, uh, the uh, Canadian goose taking on the cattle. Really? Yeah. It's Henry, thank you so much. That was a great video. Um Resiliency, Henry, that's our topic today. So thank you so much for that reinforcement of what we're sharing here today with Josh. Um, so Josh, in closing today, what are some what are some things that you'd like to say to people that have been in your corner both physically and emotionally in coming into this, this next routine of training? Uh, what, what would you like to share with them about uh, their being with you and, and, and sharing with you? Well, to me, my, my head coach, Ryan Schultz, says it perfectly. Every time after practice, we break it down. And, uh, he, he always finishes with, uh, remember, nobody gets to the top by themselves. Mm -hmm. And it's the truth. And uh, For me, it's just fun. Uh, but, but it, like, people don't realize how much, like, where, where I'm at today is it, there's so many people that have poured into me for that. And I, I, I went and had, had lunch with one of my buddies, uh, Brian Faircloth. And, uh, he's, he, he was started out as one of my clients mm -hmm. and, uh, just, we, we do sparring together. We do, uh, jiu jitsu, grappling, whatever. And, uh, over the course of time, Brian and I wanted to become good friends. And, and man, that, like, I, it was cool for me just sitting there at the table a couple of days ago, just, just thanking him. Um, uh, just because a huge part of where I'm at is because of people like him. He's, he's been there, uh, Financially for me, when uh, like when when I've needed medical bills and yeah. different stuff like that, he's he's been there uh, as a friend, as a client, as everything you know. And and to me, it's it's cool because I am I didn't get here by myself. And there's there's so many great people that have yeah. been there, bringing me on on air to to get to know more people. You know, yeah. and, uh, I mean it's it, it's so much more than just the, the physical coaches teaching you how to throw one too, you know, or how to take someone down. Uh, yeah. There's so many other people that, that have gotten here. Man, I'm blessed that I don't know. I'm blessed with people. Yeah. So I love people. It's uh it's fun to be a part. Like I always say, you know, when, when I win everybody wins. It's it's life's not about me and if I can uh, help and give back and love on people, like that's that's what makes a difference. Excellent. Well and let me add to this from the Hopefully, objective perspective. Even though I'm a bit biased uh, after I've gotten to know Josh over the last year or so, um, it's real. I, I deal with a lot of athletes in different sports and at different levels, both professional and amateur. And the, I, I use I try to do a sincerity measure of genuineness and legitimacy of intent. And um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna say with Josh right here face to face, he's legit. In what he says, it's not just words. It's not you know because a lot of times you can get on air and you got to say things because it's scripted or or you, you you embellish something because it helps amp up the jam for promoting something or whatever. But what you say is legit. It's real. It's not something that's contrived. Um, and it, and that's I think that's a difference between Josh and, and other athletes 
Uh, but the true champions, that's a measure of a true champion and not just a champion. So that, as I, as I say that, it's perfect timing because we end the hour on that note of, of kindness and respect and honoring others that have brought you to the place you're at. Uh, that's wonderful to hear. Um, please tune in, NBC Sports Channel, um, on December 31st to watch PFL championship fights for million-dollar prizes. Josh is one of those. Uh, against Felipe Lins uh, for the heavyweight title uh, for PFL 2018. Um, it's so great to be here. I really enjoy the time I spend with Josh. Uh, so everybody out there, have a great, great day on uh, the 26th of October. I'm trying to get in charge of my machines. It's almost Halloween. It's a <laughs> scary time. And if you come to my house... You're going to see a face on the door like that to scare you. So have a great day today. This is Lowell Whiteman saying good afternoon and good day for, PA, uh, for, for um, 360 Performance Talk at KUHSDenver.com. Have a great day today, all right?